Catherine is not going to be on the call tonight. So she's already emailed and says she broke a foot or something. In the no. To make oh, no. She emailed oh. you guys. Yeah, around six thirty. Scott was on. I was on. I think you were oh. on. But yeah, it was. It was so pretty recent. So, so basically, so she said out. That she would rather not. She just does not. She doesn't feel calm. Okay. Bottom line is she's just not available tonight. Okay. So I, I don't have that message, so it's on you. It's on you trust me. <laughs> I try to trust you on this. this. Is I, think, I think Ford's making that up. What, that we trust? <laughs> you know, Scott, we've only started five minutes and we're not doing real well. <laughs> <laughs> you, you walked in and called him dead. I don't know. Oh, that's right, I did. I didn't start with him. <laughs> okay, maybe I should be a little better with my uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Catherine is he's not. He's not okay. All right. Are we all ready? Everyone here that needs to be here. Okay. Camera ready. Good. I like the high finger. All right. I want to welcome everyone tonight for our regular scheduled meeting of the Montero Water and Sanitary District Board of Directors meeting on June first, twenty seventeen. Can I have a roll call, please? Uh, Director uh, Boyd. Yes. <laughs> Director Wilson, Here. Um, Director uh, Harvey, yes. and Direct, yes, and Director Huber. Present. I'm sorry, I'm fighting with this unit here yeah, right now. So this, this is exactly why we asked staff to do this because they're on the other side of the nameplates, uh -huh. and there's nothing quite like being on this side of the nameplates and having to try to do a roll call and forgetting the name of someone you've worked with for 10 years. Mm -hmm. no, it happens to the best of us. I'm going to let you know, Scott, oh, it all the time. I don't know about the best of us, but it definitely happened to me the first time I was chair. Father age. Start. President's statement basically is that the older you get, the more you forget. So I'm just in case. Okay, so, so and I, I have this now. And just for the tape, we have uh, Director Boyd, Director Wilson, Director Harvey, and Director Huber present, and Catherine will not attend um, tonight. Yes, she was out of the to Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dwight. Okay. So this is the time where we're opening to oral comments on items that are not on the agenda. Anybody? Okay. So let's go to the, we have two public hearings tonight. Uh, the first one is uh, review and possible action concerning adoption of the revised master fee schedule. Um, yeah, thank you. So uh, this item is, is really a standard item that we always try to keep very close with the approval of the budget. Um, and um, what it does is essentially we are uh, adjusting all of the fees that are uh, written down in, in, in our master fee schedule, which is essentially an ordinance, and adjusting them to the cost of living or the cost of construction index. So um, what we have in the master fee schedule also is actually the increases to the sewer service charge and the um, water rates. So we have in there already a 2.88 percent increase to the sewer service charge so that goes up per unit of flow during the wet weather months from $41.73 to $42.93 uh, I think it's important to note already <coughs> that this is now the top of the maximum allowable amount under the currently set Prop 218 limit we set the limit in 2010 and we anticipated to reach it in 2013. So we were actually able to extend that and it's somewhat due to the downturn in economy at the, uh, during those times. Uh, we were able to um, not have to worry about increasing rates, increasing the Prop 218 limit, uh, I should rather say, since quite some time, since 2013. Uh, then we have a water rate increase of 3% um, reflected in the master fee schedule. Uh, we went two years ago and set a prop to 18 that increases the water rates for five years um, each year by 3%. So we are in year three of this schedule right now and have two more years to go under this 
3% annual rate increase. And then, as I mentioned, um, all, um, for example, connection charges and other construction-related fees have been increased by 3.39%, and that's in accordance with the California Construction Index. Uh, we have um, fees that are related to uh, staff labor that are based on, on labor hours. Those are increased by 3.79%. That's in accordance with the um, labor con Labor's Consumer Price Index for the Bay Area. So the staff recommendation is to open the public <coughs> hearing, consider relevant public testimony, close the public hearing, and adopt ordinance of the Montero Water and Sanitary District restating am and amending the master fee schedule. Okay. So with that, uh, I think what I'm going to recommend to the four of us <coughs> that we open this up for a public hearing. And with that in mind, is there anyone who wishes to um, uh, present a public hearing? Hearing none, I have closed the public hearing and bring this up for any discussion with the board. None. We need a motion. Mm -hmm. So moved. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, wait a second. Oh, no, because Catherine's not here. Never mind. Right. Don't confuse me. Yeah. <coughs> oh, we can have a roll call vote. But no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. We have a second know. public hearing tonight. And this second public hearing is, uh, by the way, the action passes 4 0 is review and possible action concerning resolution overruling protest and confirming reports on sewer service charges, delinquent sewer service charges, delinquent refuse collection charges, and delinquent water charges for fiscal year 2016 and 2017. Yes, so um, th this, this is related to um, a requirement of the Health and Safety Core uh, Code that in order for us to be able to put, uh, collect the sewer service charges and delinquent charges and other related charges through the um, San Mateo County Tax Collector's Office. So we're, um, ha we have to pass this resolution every year so that um, the Tax Collector's Office allows us <coughs> to put these charges on the property tax roll. So we have the sewer service charges, and we have actually um, those documents here available for review, um, and would, would ask the board to um, adopt the resolution that allows us to do this. I want to make, make it clear that these charges are still subject to change. We're going to transfer the, um, the actual role to San Mateo County um, uh, le le in late June, and uh, for example, if we get delinquent uh, payments right now, we would of course ensure that this is reflected appropriately. Um, so, so there is there's there's still a chance that someone walks in with a payment um, and realizes that they they have to pay some outstanding fees. And we have still that chance to revise this before it goes uh, to, the t um, to the tax collector's office. So the recommendation right now is to open the public hearing, allow pertinent public testimony, close the public hearing, and adopt the resolution of the Montero Water Sanitary District overruling protests and confirming reports on sewer service charges for fiscal year 17-18, delinquent sewer service, re service refuse collection and water service charges, for fiscal year 1617, certify list of lots of parcels of land and corresponding charges against said lots of or parcels and directing transmittal of said certified list and charges to county controller for entry on the current assessment roll. I'm glad you could do that in one breath. Well, and that's and the title really says everything. With that in mind, I will open this up for a public hearing for anyone who wishes to comment on this. Any, anybody want to? Could you pass me the uh, document? Uh, absolutely. Uh, hearing none, I'll we'll close the public hearing and bring this up to the board for any discussion. So my question is, is this <coughs> differently different in any way from what we've done before? No, absolutely not. Just before. Okay. 
do, do people need to have access to, to, the, to this list? Uh, yes. So, so we're really saying this is on file for review. So anyone who would like to review it can come to the district office and take a look at it. Can I hear a motion, please? So, so moved. Second. I'll no second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Pass 4-0. <coughs> uh, moving right along, we have our consent agenda. I'll just go through it real quickly. On the consent agenda, we have approved minutes for meetings uh, on March 16, 2017. We have approved the financial statements for April 2017. Approved warrants for June 1, 2017. SAM flow report for April 2017. Monthly review of current investment portfolio. Connection permit application received. Monthly water production report for 27, April 2017. Rain report. Solar energy report. And monthly public agency retirement service report for March 2017. Is there anyone who wishes to remove any items from the consent agenda? I'll move approval of the consent agenda. Second, please. Oh, I just would like to make some comments on it first. Sure, go ahead. Okay, the uh, uh, first one is on the uh, monthly water production <coughs> report. Uh, uh, I found it interesting that uh, in the uh, ranking of uh, uh, our production sources, it appears is that uh, uh, we're getting very good use out of the uh, surface diversion at Montera Creek. And also that I noticed that uh, uh, the Portola number three well is uh, uh, out producing all the other ground sources. I think that's, in my mind, is a very encouraging thing to see. And uh, it does relate back a little bit to that uh, master uh, plan that uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit at that point. The other one is, is that uh, uh, it looks like, uh, at least in terms of return on uh, what has been invested in the uh, uh, PARS plan, uh, we're doing okay. Thank you. If I may comment on the um, Montera surface diversion, I mentioned previously, because we're seeing here right now the year 2017. Yeah. And um, so there's a couple of changes. The first one is a very obvious one. We had a very wet season, so we have really good flows in Montera Creek. The second one is that, um, if you recall, we actually had some uh, difficulties with our uh, electronics up there, 4 to 20 systems, due to lightning strike, if you recall, and, and um, uh, other, other issues. So, so there, there was a, a lot of work done on that side, and you see now the plant running at its full capacity and we're hoping for this to continue for the rest of the year. What was your final, I know I was supposed to read it, but what was your final rain total up at the mountain? Uh, I asked Kathy, for, 40, 42 some, and we can pull this up because this is pretty much the final right now. So, um, yeah, 41 and a half. 41 and a half, it says right here. I actually thought we, I saw 42 um, right recently yeah, online. Yeah, 32, we have 42, basically. Yeah. 42. Just under 42. Anything else, Bill? No. You need a second, please? I second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Everyone, I assume, four zero. Is that good to hear or no? Okay, so we're on to old business. And the first item is review and possible action concerning Sewer Authority Mid Coast Side Fiscal Year 2017-2018 budget. So between Clemens and Bill, how do you guys want to do this? Um, I, I think that this is the SAM budget, right? I think I can take this first. Okay. Um, is, it, is this one that, uh, uh, is it appropriate to have uh, a director's report on the Sewer Authority Mid Coast uh, before we do this? That's an interesting thought. So Scott, I mean, I know there's lots of things going on with the SAM. Well, I give you, <coughs> give it maybe in we, a nutshell. Maybe it's, really, it's, really the, it's, it's really right. the last paragraph of Clement's staff report, okay. uh, which is we, as as you know, we were planning to go back to uh, SAM and talk about, you know, this is a pretty ambitious budget. 
you know, hundred thousand yeah. percent bigger than, than years previous. So that's a concern. <coughs> Turns out all three agencies had some concerns. So we basically asked staff to go take the, the all the project related stuff, whether it's O and M or, or new new projects, put it put it in the list and go in and duke it out and tell us, you know, what's really the top most thing, what's really the next thing, and be prepared to uh, cut a line at a budget that is similar in size to what we do on a good year. Now, know this, that there's been some resistance down south to uh, funding some of the things that we've been doing in past years, so if, but I, that's why I use the phrase a good year. In a, in a normal year, I've been doing SAM for a long time. In a normal year, we have what we typically spend on going on and improvements. And uh, so to get back to that means spending a little more than we have in the past few years because of the reluctance that our neighbors have had. So it'll be a little stiffer than we've seen recently, but it's the kind of spending that's required to take care of the system and keep it up to date. So we expect at our next gathering to have that list and have staff be prepared to be very uncomfortable telling us it's here and we know you're going to cut it off at that point. Um, and it's going to be about halfway down on the dollars of, of what they showed us in the last one. Are they going to have a deferred maintenance budget by any chance for, for either financing or whatever else they're going to do? We did, we did ask, because we know, I mean, if we, if we cut off at uh, one and a half million, we know there's going to be some things that are still pretty likely to be deemed crucial. And so we uh, made a very specific ask that Beverly work with our, our consultant and the her staff to go find what kind of financing we might have available, whether it be grants or SRF loans or any of the other state programs or even bank loans. Okay. So there's a discussion about amortizing it over a period of time. Well, certainly, certainly spreading certain projects out is the first order of business because there's some things like there are some things that are just not time critical, things that we need to get to, but we don't have to do this year. And those, I think, we're going to not do this year. There's some things where we want to do so many feet, but how many feet of, of line replacement or repair can we do in a year? I mean, there's some question about how many projects can we run simultaneously? So even if, even if we say we have to do them all and magically we come up with all the money, do we even have what it takes to manage them all successfully? So, I think this is just a you know, sharpen the pencil, line it out, duke it out amongst yourselves, bring it back and defend the things at the top of the list, um, and then tell us how we're going to pay for it. Uh, some of it, I mean, I'm just, for what our board needs to know, some of it uh, is what I was saying earlier, we're going to need to find what money we can uh, to get this spending back up to where it needs to be. But uh, we want to be sure that what we're spending on is actually the, the right priorities. We know we know that repair of the, the IPS is a that's a must do. We're all convinced of that, no question. So that's moving ahead. The design work is underway, and uh, you know, whether we need to do it the whole length or less than the whole length, that's a question that we're looking to uh, our staff to give us an answer. So my comments are more um, process related, really, um, where you know, Scott mentioned some facts. Uh, for, for example, right now we are, uh, the, the managers were working all together to uh, try, try, try to see if, if we can all agree to um, a reprioritization after the um, recent events, we understand that there's uh, an, a need to reprioritize the um, infrastructure budget that was put forward um, and um, address this in a fashion that we can achieve um, staying in compliance for as long as, for, for pretty much forever. That's of course really the goal. and. Uh, we, we want to make sure that we reduce the SSOs uh, that Sam has seen in the past. Uh, that said, what's really important to note here is that the Sam budget is not finalized. Uh, we are going to talk about our budget very soon here, so 
what what we're saying here is Sam is not ready to approve uh, is, is not ready to send out a revised budget and that is what everybody is expecting at this time and everybody's agreeing on that there needs to be some revisions um, after we receive a revised budget we can look at processing the SAM budget meaning adopting or or, or asking for more changes at this level but uh, what we and all member agencies anticipate is that um, the, uh, the our budget can be approved we understand that any changes that are made on the SAM level will affect how much money essentially we have to take out of reserve it's important to note that this year this will not affect rates in any way no it won't but I think that the issue will be uh, that all the three entities have to address is we, we don't have the capacity to go into our tax we just voted on what are going to come out of our county uh, property taxes, so everything we're going to do will be the following year. So ultimately, it's going to have an impact yes. on rates. It just won't be for this year. And I think we have to be transparent about that. Yes. Do you um, do you guys think that um, uh, what's the best guess on what Sam's going to have in the fourth budget? I, th I think we've got to come to a solution pretty quickly. So at our next meeting is the goal. And what meeting is going? This month. Yeah. Well, this month, yeah. June is a long So, month. second second Monday. So, okay. so yeah, so we're meeting twice a month. And so, we need to meet more than then our, at, our next board meeting, at our next board meeting, then we should have something. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Scott, Scott and Clemens, is the, uh, is the 1.5, uh, the reduction to 1.5 million for the infrastructure budget, is that a the hard fast number no, no so it's it's got to be but it's got to but twice that size isn't normal <coughs> okay. right i mean but there's it's just a, it's a, it's a that's the aim, aim, aim we know that the three agencies have been able to handle that kind of load and we should be able to get that done um but remember uh, over the past couple of years we've, we've made some of that we've drawn some of that money out of reserves well there's not enough in reserves to pull that trick again. And we did that as a as a concession um, to one of the member agencies was uh, a situation they found themselves in, but we really need to get back on the page and go with funding. Okay. But there is sort of a, uh, it seems that there's, first of all, the normal budget for normal operating of SAM. Mm -hmm. Then there's also a budget for, uh, and it, it looks like uh, uh, it's not actually even called capital improvements, but uh, uh, fees related to uh, correcting the deficiencies in the uh, IPS. Okay, and then the other one is that uh, uh, all of this could go out the window if there's a major fine on this, right? The, we're all aware <coughs> and have been religious about making sure that we are all aware at every point and at every stage of regulators have a job to do. Yeah. And we have a job to do, and honestly, we should be doing the job with with or without the regulators paying attention. I mean, they could, they could turn their attention to something else and everybody should be able to count on us doing the job. Uh, this is part of what's made uh, working at SAM so interesting. It's trying to remind people and keep them on board to you know step up and doing the job that we're actually there to do. Um, it's not always easy, but uh, to your to your observation about the budget. So there, SAM has multiple budgets, and because it's a joint powers authority, and because there's a discussion. Unfortunately, long-running discussion on the collections. Oh, uh, no, not about collections. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But about who pays for the IPS. Um, we all know that the the Intertie pipeline system is the thing that connects all three agencies together. It's it's not surprising that someone who doesn't use much of the IPS might say, "Well, this it's, why should we have to pay for this?" But uh, the thing to, everybody should always remember is all three agencies had their own treatment. And when the county forced us all to join up, we had to take all, everything to one location. And the historical fact is that the location that was decided was in Half Moon Bay. So 
you got to build a pipeline to get everything from all the way down the coast side, all the way to that, that treatment point. Well, if we'd made that treatment point in El Granada, then Montera and Happen Bay would need pipelines to get our stuff to El Granada. And if it was up here where we had a perfectly fine treatment facility, then everybody else would be going through a very similar pipeline except the other direction. So it's just a historical artifact that it all goes to one location. But if you're sitting there and the treatment plant is right in your town, it's not surprising that somebody would ask, well, why are we paying for that pipeline? The fact of the matter is, it was always the intention that it was jointly owned, jointly operated, jointly maintained, jointly improved. And improvements would have to be things that we would all agree, yeah, we all agree to spend money to make whatever improvement. And from time to time, there have been some things that we've done, like, for example, the, the wet weather holding facility. We have one here, we have one in El Granada, and those have made it possible to uh, avoid having to do much more expensive projects to the IPS. Saved everybody money, but one of those, all three paid for. The other one, only two paid for. We haven't forgotten. <laughs> and there's other things that they've been reluctant to pay for. But that's, so with that conflict, that discussion, um, I think our manager is trying to be artful in the presentation of the budget to focus on, look, some things are here to keep what we have in operating condition. Um, I would call that the O&M budget. Um, We've run into problems in the way that the JPA is worded and with people trying to <coughs> lawyer it, say, well, you use the word project, and projects aren't aren't the same thing. Projects anybody can opt out of. Well, it's going to be a project when you have somebody out there digging up and repairing a pipeline, but that's not what the JPA was talking about. But it's like Second Amendment law. You know, it's, it's just one of those things. So we've got, we've got the what it costs to run the plant, we've got what it costs to collect everything and get it to the plant, um, we've got the administration costs, we've got um, new things that we need to do. So we've got the multiple budgets, but it all it all's adding up to the, um, you know, the collection of things that we're calling the budget. The real dividing line, if you're gonna put a dividing line in the budgets, one is the collections budget, which is mm -hmm. reflects three different agreements between the member agencies and SAM, where SAM is the contractor who takes care of cleaning the lines, dealing with spills, maintaining the pumps, and other kinds of things on our behalf. And, uh, that one's probably the most interesting one because Half Bay recently tried to get another agency to come in and bid on their portion of it. And Half Moon Bay represents about half of the collections budget. And there's staff, and there's equipment, <coughs> there's amortization schedules, all kind of built around this notion that we're all in this together for the long run. And if half of that money walks away, then we're going to have some disruption that we would need to sort through. We're trying to keep them at the table, but they seem to be continuing to make noises about exploring that. But for the summary part, you guys are meeting in a week and a half. Yeah. And the idea is to come a budget back to us which should include everything mm -hmm. we talked about, including hopefully there's a, a de the deferred maintenance schedule is going to be dealt with and some kind of plan to address it over a period of time. Yeah. It, yeah. The uh, um, the impression I have is that the uh, uh, IPS is in very bad shape and that we've had uh, you know, during drought season, we sort of got a pass on it, but when this last year came, we've had a number of significant uh, uh, SSOs, and that uh, if that's not brought under control real quickly, uh, nothing else really matters because... Well, that's certainly true, and that's that's why that, <coughs> that work is proceeding. And there's just no question about that work. The... Uh, the, the SSOs that we've seen, and, and in case you haven't seen the, the, the photos, the SSOs themselves have been, while well, significant volume, have not been these big cataclysmic you know, waves of, of black water washing everything. What you've got is a uh, pipeline with a section that has, uh, it's, it's old and they wear out, and so it's getting some holes in the bottom. And that leaks into the soil and then finds its way to a water course. And um, 
I think when you look at what staff has done in response to indications that there might be a problem, staff has been diligent about getting on top of it, finding out what's going on, and as quickly as <laughs> conditions allow, getting something in there and getting repaired. Some of those repairs have been affected very quickly. Uh, one had to wait uh, for an underground services thing because we've got gas lines going through there. And as bad as the leak is, it's not bad enough to go run the risk of something much worse. So um, the, it's it's all in a section of pipeline that really needs addressing. Uh, this is something that um, we're extremely focused on right now. Sam already authorized funds for the design. So like Scott said, it's pretty clear that that is, has to happen very soon. I mean, the, 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 the cares of this failing section. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. And they, I don't know how much of it has to do with the kind of weather that we've had, because what we're looking at is steel pipe uh, that's developed some holes. Um, it may have something to do with uh, being able to see water. I, I can imagine, and I would have to talk to a geologist about but I can imagine with the, the water table up because of the, the extra rain that we had this year, a leak that ordinarily might not have shown at the surface uh, may have surfaced. Yeah. We, saw, we saw it in, in one of the, the dry water courses. Uh, somebody saw water in it and was like, well, that's odd. Um, but it wasn't the kind of thing where it was terrible or anything. This was actually kind of a seep. Uh, it's just that over over a period of time that adds up to a pretty big number of balance. Okay. Anything else in this issue? So it'll be an agenda item for the next meeting. Okay. Yes. Number two is review and possible action concerning fiscal year 2017-2018 water and sewer budgets and capital improvement programs. Um, let, me, let me take a real, yeah. just a real quick introduction. Um, we had a draft budget that was presented on the May 4 meeting. Um, we met with the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee reviewed the budget. Uh, there, there were actually n not really many changes that were suggested. Um, but uh, so the Finance Committee at this point, uh, I'm happy to report, recommends approval of the budget. Um, the brief highlights we already mentioned is a water rate increase of 3%, sewer service charge increase of 2.88%. Um, before I hand this over to um, Bill and ultimately Peter, the staff recommendation will be to adopt a resolution approving the budget for the fiscal year 2017-18. Also, authorize a 3.79% cost of living wage increase for all non-exempt employees starting July 1, 2017. Okay, just the... The other really significant thing is that uh, it's really a, a board decision, but because of the fact that we anticipate that we're going to have an expenditure uh, above normal expenditures on the sewer side of about a million and a half dollars, that uh, uh, we feel that it's justified to take that out of uh, reserves uh, as opposed to uh, trying to do a uh, 218 and increase it, uh, and we feel that there were uh, uh, sufficiently, the reserves are sufficient to do that for this year, and maybe even a following year, but uh, that uh, it should be very clear that that, that uh, uh, is not something that uh, we think is prudent to do beyond one or two years. Okay. Yes, thank you. So. Um, here, do you want to? I mean, do you want me to present the cash flows, or do you want to take over and um, start talking about the budget? Whatever you would like. Okay. Well, let let me let me just follow up with um, <coughs> with Bill, and if if we start looking at the sewer cash flows, which are on page six, green box, um, I, I think we actually see very little changes when it comes to sewer service charges. Peter's going to point out some ups and downs there. Um, total operating income is really relatively flat over, over the past years. 
Um, uh, the same is true really for our operating expenses. Um, there is, th this, this, this is really much, very much an extension of our budget of prior years. What we really see <coughs> increase this year is two factors, and that is the Sewer Authority Midcoast side assessment. As we mentioned, we anticipate this being much larger than before in years before. But there's a second item that is really notable, and that is our capital improvement program is elevated compared to prior years. So we are actually looking at putting 1.6, over $1.6 million into the ground this coming fiscal year. Uh, this has to do with the, um, uh, with the Highway 1 project that we've been talking about for years that we actually had in our capital improvement program for years as an optional item and uh, we were able to secure the permit um, and uh, would like to move forward with this right now. So uh, Bill just mentioned that in the end there will be, we, we, we don't know what the Sewer Authority mid coast side budget will look like, but the numbers that we plugged in right now <coughs> show a transfer from sewer reserves um, to our, our um, operating accounts of $1.4 million. Um, and yes, we're drawing down on the, our sewer reserves, but that is with two major things hitting us, one an elevated capital improvement program and potentially elevated sewer authority mid cost side assessment. And the reserves are being drawn from what to what? Uh, well, the reserves are essentially... No, but your reserves going into this year is how much? 3.5 million. So 3 oh, 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 sorry. Yeah. Total and number, yes. And you're drawing yes. down 1.6, so it'll leave you with about 1.9. So much, so much, okay. I just yes. think we need to get that out there so mm -hmm. people understand. That's a very good point. On the water side, um, we see slight fluctuations on the water sales is, but it's it's all relatively minor so total operating income also comparatively stable altogether we're talking about 2.2 .2 million dollars um, uh, there's really no great changes in any of the categories um, our capital improvement program for this next fiscal year is right now scheduled to be at seven around seven hundred thousand dollars and there there is there is really some some projects that we would like to do next year um so we uh, we anticipate using seven hundred thousand dollars indeed that's what the capital improvement program says uh, i think it's important to note that um with with the capital improvement program of, of seven hundred thousand dollars ultimately we're looking at a very neutral cash or a cash flow that comes out pretty much almost to zero so um we were hoping to transfer every year some money into our water reserves water reserves need to be built up um, we don't anticipate doing this next fiscal year uh, this can always change if a project is delayed or not implemented then these funds are automatically transferred into reserve um, but at this time we anticipate transferring very little into reserves and um, are looking forward to putting more money into the reserves next fiscal year. And so our water think. reserves are what at this point? 300,000? Yeah. Water reserves, well we have the separate budget for the operating costs as well as the capital improvement budget. I'll tell you what those figures are at this moment in a second. Um, the water operating account is at $705,000. The operating reserve is at $705,000. The operating account is at $190,000. In the capital improvement fund, we have a reserve of $398,000. And what's your goal for the reserves for both those events? The reserve target for the operating is a, it's a calculation of 
12 months of the budgeted expenditures. So um, 12 months being the, the maximum and two months being, being the minimum. Um, this is going to be on page 23 of the budget. Um, so the maximum amount for, for what we're looking for is um, $250,000 for the two month reserve. The, the minimum amount. The minimum amount, correct. For the for the capital fund, <clears throat> once again, there's a minimum and a maximum target amount, which is um, which is taken from the the lowest five year CIP amount and the maximum um, and the highest amount. So the max being fiscal year 1920 um, at $576,000 plus the engineer estimate of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for one point three million dollars being the max, and the minimum being a little over one million dollars, which we are <clears throat> vastly underfunded at about four thousand dollars is of what we currently have. Okay. <clears throat> so, any other highlights that we need to know? Uh, there was, I think, one other thing. Oh, we really did not talk about this in the finance committee. Is you're anticipating. Uh, having uh, two people retire and two people hired, correct? Uh, uh, yes, that's okay. And that, uh, if uh, my understanding is correct, that when we set up the uh, PARS plan, that was for existing employees, and that uh, new employees do not uh, automatically become part of that, uh, uh, that there is some board discretion whether they go into that or not, correct? Well, there's a, um, there's a vesting period of five years. It is a benefit that the district offers. Um, the, uh, ultimately, all, all of the benefits are, of course, subject to change um, with board decisions, but there is no process in which the board needs to be asked for new employees to start paying into the PARS fund, that's what they're really doing for the first five years, right? So okay. after five years of working here, they would be vested. You would have to take an active action when you change your bill. That's your understanding? Yeah. Scott, that's your okay. understanding? Okay. Yeah. No, that's what the five-year vesting was about. Okay. It was like, okay. if you're not here for five years, you're not up for it, but it's, uh, if you're here for five years, then you got to put it five years, right? So and it, it, it seems to be working out. I just want to cross my eyes. Where are the expressions? Well, no, I mean, and, you know, I, I certainly understand the... Dodge your teams. Uh, I certainly understand the question, especially in light of, uh, like, different different pension levels for the, you know, for other agencies that have the grandfathering for the older, bigger plans and the newer yeah. plans, which are the leaner plans. Like, yeah, so... Yeah, okay. I think the bottom line is that we're... Your eligible based on the criteria developed by your initial approval. Okay. Anything else? I didn't think that I mean anything significant because we had this a couple weeks ago and we told that there's no major changes. We talked about the capital budgets. Anything else that we should know? Um, no, I, I think that the uh, the main ones are that the, the, the SAM thing, the uh, fact we're going to reserves, the uh, fact we're going to uh, uh, maintain our capital improvement uh, uh, program for the, the on the sewer side, which is really ongoing from several years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are the, and then the the whole thing with reserves is that uh, uh, we're just staying flat on that for right now. So does a member of the finance committee wish to do a motion to approve the budget? I would like to make a motion to approve the budget. If you don't, then we're in trouble. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> can we have a second, please? Uh, I'll, I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Uh, I'd uh, like to thank our committee yeah. and staff. Uh, it's hard to put together something like this, and I really appreciate it. And I understand well, that. It's, it's Peter and, and Clemens did the heavy lifting. All, all that Catherine and I did was take pot shots at Well, well the, I, I appreciate the, the teamwork. Uh, I know it's work, and that's the reason we pay some people for it. Um, but I still, I still appreciate the, uh, the overarching you know, teamwork that goes into it, and to be able to get to this point and uh, to look around, 
stare each other in the eyes, look deep into your souls, and, <laughs> and actually smile at each other. I yes. was yeah. quite impressed by that report. So I'm doing the stats. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Vote. Good work. Thank you, Peter, as well. Appreciate your work. Oh, you don't feel in, uh, insulted that we didn't ask you to do a 35 minute presentation. Okay. That's it's old enough. Thank you. Yeah, I figured it was. <laughs> and then the third item for old business is, whoops, just got away from me. Review and possible action concerning the 2017 District Water Master Plan update. Comments? Yes, so I, I'm going to keep my staff report short because I'm going to hand this over to Tanya in a second for a more in-depth presentation. But very briefly, um, larger agencies are required to adopt every five years what is called an urban water management plan. We're not an urban uh, water system uh, that depends on the number of uh, connections ultimately so um, we still produce the same document we're just calling it differently it's our water master plan it's our snapshot of how are we doing where are we at no this is the presentation so and this year we receive the what the master plan update the first master plan update really after the repeal of the moratorium and us starting to issue connections. And with that, I, I'd like to simply hand this over to Tanya. I'm going to give you a, a, a warning that we're probably going to project a slideshow. And Tanya's going to do it in such a way that we talked about earlier. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Here are our chair uh, expressing an interest in credit. <laughs> So, directing it to our staff instead of the guy sitting next to him who he really wants to direct it. Let me try to fire too, too much looking at this. Where's the PowerPoint? Oh, let's see, we turn this thing on. So, and then we go. Slideshow, play from well, start. See the sun is uh, reflecting off of uh, off the glass. Not off the mountain. So. Oh, you mean in the picture or in reality? <laughs> Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the board, um, thank you for having me tonight to talk about, this is really a document that documents uh, a lot of successes and accomplishments by this district. Um, this is a really brief overview and highlights of the master plan. As you recall, in March of this year, at the end of March, we have delivered a very detailed presentation with all the numbers and um, trends and, and some, some, this is just a summary of the analysis and what went into the master plan. Um, so uh, we'll start with um, what the objectives were. The objectives of the master plan really is to, uh, it's a state of the system, right? Uh, how, do, what is our current supply, demand and condition of the system? And how do we project, do we, what do we expect the system to do in the future? The, the master plan does act like, as a guiding document for future policy and management decisions. That is why it's so important uh, for you to um, see it. The outcome, it's a living document that will serve the district for another five to ten years. And out of that document comes out a, a capital improvements program. The uh, importance of this slide, I'm not going to read all the numbers, but uh, one of the most important Parts of it is the bottom that says that this is your reliable supply, which is um, 760,000 um, gallons per day. This is with one source out of service. And um, these are your sources. Uh, different colors indicate different sources. As you can see, 
since the altivista world came online, um, it has become a, a major, major production source for the district. Tanya, high quality water. Can, can I ask you a question on this slide? Yeah. Because we've seen this slide actually the last time. Right. And we talked about the addition of the Pillar Ridge wells, which is all the way to the right, the yellow color on top. Yes. Um, am I right to assume that this, this is really an addition in the sense of if we wouldn't have added the Pillar Ridge wells, the slide would literally look like we removed those so meaning actually that the production would be lower correct okay that's correct uh it's a major uh accomplishment having a consolidated deployage uh water system for two reasons one we did acquire three new sources three additional sources and secondly uh, the district used to hold the the, the total production for Pillar Ridge in reserve because they could come um, on online and use the district's water at a 24 hour notice, which is a very um, difficult situation, uh, for, was a difficult situation for the district in the past. And so re removing that and getting the buffer of those wells is a major um, accomplishment. Unaccounted for water, which is water losses, basically, has dropped uh, from 14% to barely 8%. It's actually last year at 6.9%, but we're taught 8% is the rolling average since 2004. So the actual uh, water loss at this time is 6.9%, which uh, includes the treatment plant uh, not operating water, uh, for backwash and stuff like that. So it's not all leaky pipes, but that is an indication the water loss has dropped from 14% to 7%, basically cut by half, an in indication of a good operating procedures, good maintenance, and also an implementation of, good, uh, of a proper capital improvement program. <coughs> um, again, this is a slide with lots of numbers. But what I would, uh, would, I would invite you to look at um, <coughs> is, let's just say uh, your per capita demand. That's an important item there. That's uh, line number three. And we, we the district has low capital, per capita demand always, but it went down from 84 gallons per day per person to 66 in this master plan. And this is all averaged over 12 years. So the actual uh, per capita demand is even lower. But for planning purposes, we use this demand because it's an average of the past, of the, of the, of the years the district has been operating the system. So if you had to do the last three years, what's the average? I think we're at 59. 59. And uh, this is what is else is very important. If you look at a total source capacity, uh, while the per capita demand has been going down, reasons are the same as unaccounted for water going down, conservation by the customers, but also all the proactive measures taken by the district. So while the per capita demand is going down, <coughs> losses are going down, your total source capacity has gone up. That is due to, um, again, rehabilitation of the existing sources, acquisition of a new source, and the pillarage acquisition. So you went from uh, around 700,000 gallons per, per day to almost a million. You know what would be really helpful, I don't, I don't think we need to do anything about that. I mean, the per capita ban over a 10-year average is relatively useless data. I'm wondering if um, we would have nice to have a bar graph that shows the year numbers over time. I think it just shows a better, it captures the more recent data okay. than what I think this 10-year average does. Sure. Um, I my guess is you've been under 60 for several years, but this doesn't capture that. That is true. Um, very true. Uh, absolutely. It's a very good point. However, the reason we use 66 is not to be overly ambitious and think that the demand are actually lower. No, but I mean a bar graph would capture the same Yeah, we, absolutely. Okay. Just a thought for the future. Okay, thank you. 
Um, this is just a, a list of gain deficiencies and what I just spoke about, the improvements that have been made. Um, there's some, some uh, projects and um, operational improvements that the district staff has made that cost close to nothing. Um, I mean, very low cost, low hanging fruit, but they brought major benefit. And um, th that, um, that is just an indication of how your staff works to uh, continuously to improve and protect the system. Your storage capacity. This is a very interesting slide. Uh, we went from 662,000 gallons to 1.4 million gallons and um, with three new tanks and the addition of the pillar ridge storage facilities. And it appears at this time that the district has a sufficient storage capacity for many, many years to come for any foreseeable future. The water demands. Um, this slide just demonstrates one thing. You have enough water, again, for many years to come. And the only deficit that predict is predicted is tor towards year 2060. Who of us is going to be alive? I will be 100 years old. She's going to be alive. She's going to be alive. So it's all good news that the district is in a very good shape with a reliable supply, local supply. Um, you've seen the slide before, but I just wanted to remind you we, we model the system using uh, a hydraulic model, computer generated model. And the, the graph on the right hand side just shows you the green lines are good lines that they pass the test, and the red lines need to be improved. This is for fire stimulation. The uh, SEBI projects that you saw in the, in the budget and the, C in the capital improvement program uh, were based on the modeling and the redundancy of you on, on the operator in interviews and the facilities inspection. And that resulted in the CIP with eight programs and projects, seven of which are uh, district projects and uh, to be paid by the district. And the eighth project is a big wave main extension project. I want to point out that this is financed solely by the big wave developer. And uh, not a dime of it will be paid by the district. And that really is the highlight. Um, Concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, Portola number three. I believe it's listed as having a uh, capacity of something like uh, 10 gallons per minute. The sense has been uh, rehabbed uh, and it's been in operation now for some time. It seems like that, that uh, figure is uh, artificially <coughs> low, that our actual water supply is. Uh, uh, somewhat greater than the uh, 758,000 that you show. Uh, same way, to a certain extent, Portola number four, although it's not now working, it uh, uh, did show that it had the capacity to put out a lot more water. Um, but the, uh, so it seems like we actually have uh, s somewhat more capacity uh, or supply than what uh, this even indicates. Um, the other thing that uh, uh, it just doesn't really show up on this is really uh, the pipe, the piping. Uh, do we really have anything that shows, you know, what the condition of uh, the pipes are? We do. Um, the pipes are to some extent, yes. Yeah. Um, Julian and his crew have a leak map. So we do know the ages of the pipes, mostly. Right. Mostly, uh, most of the pipes. We uh, they also have a leak map. We know where leaks have been, so that's how we identify the projects that progress forward. Like we did the uh, this fiscal year, did the fourth main street main replacement because of the number of leaks it um, has experienced. 
Um, so to answer your last question, the first comment, uh, it's a very good point you just made. Now, I, I want to explain a couple of things. Um, that two, two things. We do list theoretical capacities, which, which what the, the, the sources are rated, the rated capacity that is in our permit, uh, in the district's <coughs> permit, by the Department of Water Resources, I'm sorry, by the State Water Board, Division of, of, uh, of Drinking Water, um, and until we re revise that permit, that's what we have to okay. list. So, and, and I think it's, it's important to note that um, you know, all wells are always, I mean, they're, they're really natural sources, right? So, so there, but there's fluctuations in right. what each well can produce right. at all times. It depends on the water le groundwater levels. It, per it, it depends on many factors in the wells themselves. Right. So it's, it's really an arbitrary number that the state uh, gives this well. And it well, has- Based on test, initial testing. Yeah. Right, based on initial testing. But we see you know, some sources in reality being lower and others in reality being higher. Right. And yes, there is, there's a reason to talk to the state about adjusting okay. this. And then there's another point to, uh, to your um, query. The, the wells respond to the demand in a way. In, in a way. They, they won't pump more than the system is asking them to pump. Mm -hmm. So, um, and by where, what we're seeing with Wagner, for example, um, which is a major producing well, um, as the demands are going up, in that zone that where the Wagner pumps, there will be a point where it won't be pump won't be able to pump at all. It because starts to choke. Yes. Okay. Exactly. That's a good yeah. way to put it. Yes. Um, the, the the question about the condition of the pipes was really sort of uh, based on thinking about uh, the sewer uh, IPS is that uh, uh, we don't want to get into a condition where uh, we're not proactively ahead of the game on uh, the piping infrastructure. And so that uh, uh, the mechanism by which uh, uh, we're able to project out, uh, uh, you know, is that based on the seat of the pants? Is it based on uh, a periodic uh, uh, pulling a pipe and doing a cross-section on it, uh, you know, so what mechanism do we know that uh, we've got uh, a useful life left in the pipe or we don't have useful life left in the pipe? Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, first and foremost, how many leaks we have had in the pipe? Yeah. That is the first rule, right? Um, we do have the ages of yeah. the pipes, but I have found, we have found in, in, in working with this agency and other agencies that the age of the pipe is not necessarily an indicator of its condition. Right. Uh, it depends on the soil condition on what's the, uh, how close the water is and what the material of the pipe is. So we won't necessarily put improvements in place or pr propose to this board that we spend enormous amounts of money in placing the pipes because they're 40 years old. Right. Um, uh, so under certain circumstances, they, they would be fine and, and for another 20 years. Uh, on, on the other hand, there are some pipes that are of newer vintage that have been either poorly installed at some point or they have experienced different water quality, and um, they have corrosive soils that would be <coughs> subject to corrosion. Although the district has a lot of asbestos uh, cement pipe, which um, we're slowly replacing. As a pipe itself, it's a very excellent pipe. It doesn't yeah. corrode, it, it's hard to repair, mm -hmm. um, but it's cool. As a material, as a carrier, it's it's a good pipe. Right. Steel pipe is is not a good pipe, so we have been slowly and but surely replacing small steel water mains uh, with the C900 PVC water mains. Right. 
of a proper diameter. Uh, so, no, it's not a seat of the pants. It's quite a bit of a uh, quite a bit of thinking goes on the staff's level and with coordination with us and the, and the management to decide which remains to replace. Um, and also proactively when the district does repair leaks, that which do happen, as fewer fewer times than ever, but they do happen, uh, they tend to replace the, the section they can replace uh, instead of patching it up, so which is a much more proactive and better repair. Mm -hmm. But it's part of that protocol also to uh, basically you got a pipe that is defective you have the golden opportunity to do an assessment of the piping within a certain uh, area because you see what the, what the characteristics of that pipe are, right? That's correct. That, that's correct, and it's pretty much happening at all times. Um, what's, what's usually failing is not the pipe. What's usually failing is anything that's attached to it, say, for example, a service saddle that makes right. the connection. Um, what what we do quite a bit is, for example, when we install new services, uh, you, you have to tap a section or if you install a valve, and that really is a very good indicator because that that uh, coin that you receive out of this, right, it gets pushed outward if you cut this, is like a hole saw plug. It is exactly. It's literally it's a hole saw plug. Yeah. Um, is really a very good indicator. And, and Tanya described it excellent. It's, it's, it's really our staff is working closely with SRT on this, but this is where, you know, where our operators, our eyes are um, very important. Mm -hmm. The steel pipe that we exchanged, um, so we got rid of almost all steel pipe, um, and uh, the ages of these steel pipes that are bad materials are at least 60 plus up to 100 years old. Um, so the pipe, we have actually some very favorable soil in the district when it comes to you know, pipe life. Because it's not corrosive. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So my question for you guys is to the view of the possible action. What action were we asked to do to uh, you were asked to receive the master plan okay. update. So basically it's a receiving of information. There's no real action to take tonight. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. I'd oh, just like a, to say <coughs> it, you know, to your questions, um, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. This is something I've come to expect, and so I'm glad you asked. Otherwise, I wouldn't say anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, but it also informs how we view uh, what we're doing down in San. It's one of the things that's a real difference between our agency and the city, where the city has a wide range of responsibilities, very wide range. And here, because we do water and sewer here, we've got so much more you know, focused attention on, on the maintaining of the utilities that board members here are, it's just totally normal that we'll ask questions and we're talking about the point and we're talking about the site. So, and it's just part of how we live and breathe this this work that we're doing. And so down at Sam, we see this and we think about all this, and it's much more present. Um, and uh, these kind of questions are, are exactly the right kind of questions to ask. And part of how we maintain our sense of urgency at Sam is we we know what it takes, and we know eyes on maintenance, looking for the leaks, doing the using your opportunity when you have it open for repair to go in and examine up and down. I just asked our general manager a question, that that very question, hey, we had this opened up, did we take the opportunity to look down both points of the pipe? Um, because that's that's just how long terror wants to be for us. I, mean, okay. uh, I have one more comment, and that is I want to highlight how much work actually goes into this document. Uh, this is where our um, long-term relationship with our engineer really pays off big time. Uh, th this, this, is, this is really, I mean, it's unimaginable how complicated the system really is. It's, I almost some, sometimes feel like you have to be a doctor and you're looking at, you know, a real-life organism here. 
And um, so I wanted to thank Tanya for putting this together and putting this together under a you know, timeline and being able to complete it. And an excellent presentation. I mean, I'm now, now being quite serious. I think the only concern I had was that little sheet that had the red, all the red on the water line or the fire protection lines. Mm -hmm. who's, who's responsible for all of that? And they look like about three quarters of the is in red, that very last page. You, okay, so you. So I'm, I'm looking at the distri dis distribution system analysis. Uh, and you, you said if, if it's green, it's all good. If it's red, it's like, it's, it's probably yep. red. Yep. Uh, which oh, um, you're looking no, at? No, 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 it's not all red. I'm sorry. This is, this is just, to, this is not a, a natural s state of the system. It just says, it's just to show you how we do this. All right, so so the red that you that is that those colors are not accurate. Mm -hmm. to show well, no, no, they're accurate, but we have to force them to to be to force a couple of fires, which normally we wouldn't expect. Uh, in other words, this is for demonstration purposes. You have in the in the actual plan uh, in the document pages so around 110 ish. Okay. Um, it starts. You have many more. Um, Graphs and uh, so the question uh, I just had, the, the, the summary of the question is, are, do we have any concerns about our fire lines or fire protection lines? That um, th these are this is the distribution system. Yes, yes we do have concerns, and um, not currently. We have some pipes that we want to improve for fire protection purposes, and they're part in, of the CIP, but mostly this. Um, is for the public. Um, it, it's the stimulation for future, okay. meaning when you add more customers, this is what happens. These lines stop being able to send fire flow. This is why we have the CIP and recommend improvements. Um, but they're not all red. There's some areas that are. Okay, now I just, I mean, from the presentation, I just heard red everywhere. I just want to make sure. That no, no, it's not everywhere. Um, no, um, I'm sorry if I misspoke or misrepresented this, but no. Um, but as, as we experiencing population growth, those lines will become of a, of a concern, and that's when we will recommend okay. replacement. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? I agree. That was an excellent presentation. And the work is, is obvious. So how long have you been with the district? 13 years. Wow. So you want to make it to 100. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do uh, reports. Uh, Scott, I know we had a fairly extensive yeah. discussion with Sam. Anything else? I can go quick on this. So we, um, we had uh, discussions on the four different horse main breaks. Uh, I'm not going to call them breaks, the, the holes in the line. Uh, it's not like something actually broke open. Uh, uh, you may have read about uh, the review had, had some concerns about uh, the leaks and notification. And, uh, I really think in reading through their article, there's some, there's some misunderstanding or just some things they didn't cover. But it has never been the practice of any of the agencies on the coast side put up a notice of any kind of leak anywhere other than in the affected areas and to make sure the county is aware of these things. And that we file our SSO or our sanitary sewer overflow reports <coughs> with the regulatory bodies uh, within the time that's required, which is very, very short window. Uh, we do all those things, but putting out a press release is not something that we've had a practice of doing. One of the board members had, had asked that we do put out a press release and so we're like well we've never done that before and what's most important is that the crews out there getting the job done getting it all fixed up getting it all cleaned up notifying the regulators and posting the beaches or any areas that are contaminated that's their mission and uh, we had some discussion about this and we all pretty much agree that the last thing we want is somebody drafting a press release when we should be doing those other things I, I do agree, but I do think one area of improvement we should look at is making sure all the board members of the agencies are aware of it. 
that we've, we've made that very specific okay. ask that, that we be notified so that if anyone comes to us with questions, we actually have some information. Yeah, we include the member boards as well. I don't remember hearing any. That's a, but we, how about if we ask that you pass those along to the full board when you receive it? Because Clemens, it just, I think, it's, I, it's yeah. a minor issue, but I think part of the, to your That's point, a good thought. I don't think it needs to be to the press, but I do think the board members should be aware of this. Right. Absolutely. I think it's it's vital uh, that we post it locally, especially on the beaches, um, yeah. and we do that. Yeah. So if people haven't seen those signs, it's, it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put out there that I think the reason you haven't seen a sign is you're on a different part of the beach yeah. that's not gonna be affected. And they're taking water samples, they're diligent about making sure that we're, aware of what contaminants may be out there if we have all these unfortunate spills. Okay, um, <clears throat> so we talked about that. We're going to have our uh, media team, which is uh, one of our directors and our staff, come back with some recommendations about other fine, fine tuning we might want to do on that. Um, we did talk about the budget recommendations, so we will touched on that. Uh, and then uh, one more. So. That was it. Okay. All right. Uh, Nick calls council. Catherine's not here. CSDA report. Catherine's not here. Uh, CCWD and CCWD committee report. I've been. This has been on for years. I've not had one report. Hmm. Is this something we need to keep on here, or what do you guys think? I don't think we need to keep it on here. So maybe the uh, friend is going forward, we can drop that. Okay. Um, attorney's report is not here. Director's report, anybody? General manager report? Yes. Um, we have news from San Mateo County. Uh, heads up that they anticipate starting the work on Canoff Street mid next week. So anyone that's interested is listening <coughs> or knows the area so they anticipate that this starts next week uh, there's still some caution about how much water they actually find in the ground and what can be done but um, it looks like there will be some mobilization happening and that's good news okay we're going to go into closed session so i'll let you pack up the cameras and um, and then once we do that, we will go into closed session.